had this Miller Multimatic 220 ACDC welder in here for almost a year now. Well, tell you the truth, probably nine or 10 months. I believe it's been 10 months. Uh, but anyway, we're not a welding shop per se, so we don't use this every single day. But I will say multiple times a week, we're breaking out this welder and doing something, whether it's small fabrication stuff, uh, whether it's uh, sheet metal work, whether it's something you know, where neighbors or friends or uh, business friends uh, need something welding up, welded up or fabricated or fixed. Uh, we're constantly doing that, uh, even you know, bringing it remote and you know, picking it up and taking it somewhere. Done that quite a few times as well. So it is a welder that gets used a lot. Um, and we're the type of shop that we kind of do a little of everything. You know, we don't do a lot of just sheet metal, but we don't do a lot of heavy gauge stuff either. We're not welding a lot of, you know, five eighths thick, you know, plate or anything like that. Typically it's quarter inch thick or smaller. Uh, sometimes some schedule 80 pipe, something like that. Uh, but for the most part, you know, it's, it's quarter inch, it's uh, three sixteenths, it's eighth inch uh, flat bar and, and uh, fabricating things together, even doing some aluminum work. And I will say that after having the Millermatic, I believe it was the 211, the 220 is just a major step up. The, the other Millermatic or Multimatic was a great machine, but it just didn't quite give us the flexibility um, and even all the options that the new 220 does. So it's really just kind of stepped up the game in the, again, and we really like where it's headed. Uh, you get uh, the high frequency side. We can now TIG aluminum. Uh, that we couldn't do before, now we can with this machine. And again, just kind of raising that bar as to uh, even our max capacity, if, we, if you will, on what we can weld with steel as well as aluminum. And again, being able to take aluminum, not requiring a spool gun or requiring having to, having to have aluminum wire. Now we can do some TIG work as well, uh, not just uh, steel or stainless steel, but also on the aluminum side, uh, which we like working with. We like getting involved in in that aluminum side, building lighter things, uh, even if it's you know small chassis stuff for, for smaller items that we'll be doing here pretty soon. Uh, but anyway, we've been quite happy with the Miller Multimatic. Um, and uh, we're gonna talk about it a little bit. Uh, we'll walk through the features and the intuitive screen and then, uh, and then let us circle back. And I do wanna give kind of some, uh, some end thoughts, if you will, on my thoughts on the machine and kind of where it's, where it's headed as where as I think the focus is. Uh, and the type of person that I think is going to use this machine. So for this initial startup, I've got this hooked up to just 110 volts. So let me flip the switch. So I've got it hooked up to a, just a 10 gauge, uh, 50 foot extension cord. Uh, and we're going to turn it on here and we've got it set to uh, MIG steel um, C100. Let me actually put that to C25. There we go. So 75% uh, argon, 25% CO2 you'll see right off the bat a very intuitive startup screen or a very intuitive, intuitive screen here. Now, if you're a pro welder per se, or you just want to go off of uh, off the chart, something like that, you can turn this auto set off. So easily just turn that off. And now you, all you have is voltage and wire speed in the MIG. And if you switch to TIG, uh, then you see it's still got some intuitive to it. It's going to tell you, hey, do you make sure you got your clamp set up right and your... Uh, your torch, and then you can go to setting your frequency, setting your amps, um, set that where you want it, uh, and then you can also set your tungsten size, or you're running 16th or uh, 330 seconds. So you don't have to have that on, but if you turn it on, it's gonna give you a target in each mode. And TIG, okay, we're, we're TIGing eighth inch material, and this is a good, good point here. So you see I'm in TIG aluminum, and it's telling me eighth inch as far as I can go, Again, I'm plugged into 120 volt. That's one thing I love about the Miller uh, 220 ACDC. I believe the 211 did this as well. Uh, but anyway, when I plug this into 220, it will recognize this and it will reset my parameters as to how far I can go. So the machine just doesn't work off of 110 or 220. It's intuitive off of that voltage as well, off the input voltage. And then it knows where your settings are on the machine um, so you're not saying you're going to draw a certain amount of amps and not be able to do so. So again, with this saying 135 amps, I'm at 120 volts. When we change in a moment, you will see that cap go up. Just wanted to point that out and also recommend whenever you can run this off of 220 volts, you know, run this off of, 
you know, not a, uh, just 110 volts, not off your standard outlet, but, but step up to a 220 volts whenever you can, and you're gonna have some more capability, some more flexibility as well. Uh, but let's get back to the screen here. I could go all the way up here, set this on flux core. Now I can run a flux core wire if I want to. I don't have to run a shielding gas. I can run a flux cord, uh, that's my shield, is, is in, in the wire itself. And again, it's gonna give me some target parameters here. You may want more wire feed speed, so you can bump that up. You may wanna slow it down, but it's just giving you a target based on the material, based on the wire size, and it's giving you a target of what they think that voltage and wire feed speed is. And, and I will tell you, it's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good target that they've hit. Um, I would say it matches up most of the time. Sometimes I wanna bump some things on if I'm just, you know, burning some stuff in and I don't really care how it looks, I may bump that voltage up quite a bit. I may feed some more wire feed into wire speed into it. At the same time, I've definitely turned it down as well, depending on am I doing uphill, overhead, things like that. Um, so I've got flexibility to make those changes, but it is putting me in the target window. Again, same thing here, even though I'm in flux core, it's saying, hey, how big is your wire? I can bunk my wire up and then I can say, no, I'm just uh, gonna be burning some 18 gauge uh, sheet metal. So I can bump that down and I can go into MIG stainless. I can go into MIG uh, steel C25. Again, we're running 75% argon, 25% CO2 like we are. And again, it's going to, with the intuitive screen, make sure that you've got uh, your ground clamp um, or your work lead and your torch in the right spots and based off of what you're welding as to where it's gonna put this, you know, I can again go into uh, to auto set mode or turn that off. Um, so, and, and again, in this case, oh, I'm welding 3 16th inch material and uh, 030 wire, or again, I can bump that wire up and it's gonna change the voltage and the wire feed speed accordingly based off of what I'm welding as well as what I'm welding with. Um, so very intuitive interface here. And again, that's gonna change for each, each uh, process that I choose. If I go into a MIG and aluminum, it's gonna say, okay, make sure you're using the spool mate or a spool gun basically, and making sure that you've got it set up correctly. Then when I go into TIG aluminum, you'll see it says use 100% argon gas and making sure you've got that set up correctly. And then again, choose the material. And again, you see my, I'm capped out at an eighth inch material. So it's not real thick when aluminum, but aluminum really requires a lot of amps to, uh, to weld. And you see it's at 135 and I can go up to 140 and that's as high as it will go. Again, remind, remind you, I'm plugged into a standard 110 volt outlet right now. Show you right here. So that's what I'm plugged into right this second. So let's do this. Let me turn this machine off. I'm gonna change out my plug and then we'll actually see how the interface changes as we plug into 220. So shut it down. And by the way, when you shut it down, you'll see it says powering down. You hear the fan kick on and it actually goes into kind of a shutdown mode. Unplug this here. Very easy to change this plug. And you can't do this wrong either. Uh, so you see the vertical one there and thread that on. Now we're ready to go into our 220 plug. And now we'll power this on. And it says input voltage 240 volts. So it already knows that we're uh, we've upped the game when it comes to, to voltage, if you will. And now I'm still in TIG, of alum TIG aluminum and it's at eighth inch material, but you see I've got two more steps I can go to. So I can go all the way up to a quarter inch in aluminum. Now my cap is 210 amps, or actually that's my target, and I can, that's as high as I can go. So I can go up to 210 amps, where before I think it was at 140, and duty cycle is gonna be different on that as well. I don't remember exactly, but again, it knows what that voltage is. It's changing the intuitive parameters in the screen based off of that voltage too. I don't have to go into any changes. Uh, when I'm taking aluminum again, I can go into the off and I can set my, set my frequency. I can set the balance um, as well as if I go into TIG steel, this is pretty cool here, is that uh, now I can go into, let it, let it get to the screen there. 
So now I've, when I've got it off, so here I've got it on and it's saying, okay, I'm, I've got 332nd or tungsten and I'm welding 20 gauge. Let's uh, weld some eighth inch material. It's setting it at 120 amps. I can bump that up, bump it down if I want to. Also, if I turn this off, I can go in the pulse mode. So I can actually, let's say I'm welding some uh, sheet metal on a vehicle and I want to really keep it cool. I can turn that pulser down where I'm just pulsing, say, you know, five pulses per second. Maybe I can do one per pulse per second where it's just zzz, zzz, zzz. So you can set the pulser here and actually do some pulse welding. That is a really cool trick. I recommend that you play around with that. Play around with that and understand how that works. Make you a better, better uh, <laughs> it will make you a better welder if you practice that. Uh, and it'll enable you to do some stuff, even if you're welding corners, things like that on stainless, what have you. Uh, really cool trick there. I can turn that off. By the way, there's also a hidden screen, or I shouldn't say hidden screen, hidden menu, uh, just like an iPhone, no. Uh, so I can hit the, the minus on this side and the plus on this side. And you see it goes into an internal motor calibration. Uh, I can basically sort through these 12 different options here. So the run in, uh, I can go into, uh, basically that's for the spool mate. Um, even process and primary logs, even has error logs here. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff here that you can go into uh, in the Miller's manual and it actually tell you some of this. I can do a, do a factory reset if I need to. Um, so really cool here that you do have the ability to go into, oh, that was the uh, post flow for, for TIG control. It's set on auto, which typically runs pretty long. Uh, you can actually set that to be, uh, say, a, you know, a five second um, uh, post control, post flow control. So when you let off the TIG torch, it's actually going to post flow that argon for five seconds and, you know, continue to cool that, give that uh, environment, that atmosphere while it's cooling that piece. Um, but I can also, oops, uh, go in and actually set that back to auto. There we go. So now it's on auto. And again, I can go back to my screen just by hitting the positive and negative again. So nice hidden screen there. Um, and then even into stick welding here, which by the way, I don't have my stick electrode um, plugged in right now, uh, but it just tells you hey, what to be using. And then I can dial in my amperage, you know, Again, it can give me a target or I can turn that off and I can set it, set my dig as well as my amps here as well. Or I can turn that back on and have that intuitive display. So really easy to control this Miller Multimatic uh, 220 AC-DC machine. So here on the machine, you have uh, DIMS connectors here uh, for your TIG torch, for your work lead uh, to easily, you know, take those in and out, um, plug those in as you need to, even your uh, stick electrode as well. And then this is going to be your foot pedal control uh, for your TIG torch. So you can easily unscrew that and put it in. This has, uh, this is a wired uh, TIG pedal. Um, so pretty typical. Uh, but Miller also offers a wireless pedal, which by the way, we'll be upgrading. And basically that wireless module just plugs right in here. You pull this wire out, plug in your wireless module. And then I think it's like three AAA batteries that go on the, the module and the foot pedal. And then you get wireless control. You don't have to run that wire. So all you're dealing with is a, is a ground clamp, your earth clamp, and earth ground, and then uh, as well as your TIG torch. Um, also, one thing I would say a nice upgrade um, is one that we'll be doing here in the uh, next week or two is this is an air-cooled TIG torch. Um, pretty typical on about every you know, entry level TIG machine that you'll see or multi-process. And that is, uh, there's no fluid running through this. And so as you're especially doing aluminum, this torch will tend to heat up quite uh, quickly um, and get very hot if you're doing a lot of aluminum. And so we're gonna switch to a water-cooled torch. Now Miller sells, sells water-cooled machines as well. So it's not something they don't know about. Again, just something that I would recommend to upgrade if you're going to do a lot of aluminum is plan on getting a, a water cooled torch as well or a fluid cooled torch. And we'll cover a, a video on that as well at a later time. This Miller Multimatic 220 ACDC has been really a phenomenal welder. Uh, in addition to the welder, when we got this, uh, we really weren't happy with the cart it came with. So we actually made a new welding cart. And if you haven't seen our video on it, 
it's worth a look. Uh, we took a heart uh, toolbox, which you can find at Walmart, um, and we converted it into a welding car because we wanted something to hold our welder, uh, as well as our plasma cutter, the two bottles, uh, all our torches, um, consumables, things like that. And this has been really great. Um, so really low slung, I call it low slung, like a low rider almost sitting on the ground almost. And I made like an exoskeleton out of one by two tubing. Uh, but anyway, it's worth worth a uh, it's worth a look on the uh, video of us making that. Uh, but anyway, so the 220 has worked really really well. Um, one of the things I added recently was, if you look on the back here, one thing I didn't have right away is the extension cord holder back here. So the hooks on the back, I didn't initially have those, so we uh, we fabbed up some looks uh, I think some one by strapping here, some one by uh, one by eighth inch uh, flat bar and just uh, bent those and put a little lip on it, ground the edges and tacked them on the back of the, of the heart toolbox here. Works out great. And by the way, if that's, that's one big tip I would definitely recommend. Um, this is a 110, 220 welder, so you can run it on 110 uh, or you can switch out the, uh, the, the plug here included here in the welder to 220 as well. Uh, and you're just gonna get a lot more functionality going to 220, so wherever you can, uh, I would recommend that you, you run it on, on the 220 side, not just on the 110 side. Uh, so I definitely recommend that. So having this here so I can easily grab this cord and, and plug it in and run it across the shop wherever I need it is very nice. But then again, with the uh, with 220 ACDC, I can easily, if I'm taking this mobile, taking it to a friend's place, whatever, I can easily swap it out and run it off 110 volts. So it's really nice to have. Open it up. The Miller is just about like most of their multi-process machines. And uh, what you have here is you have an 11 pound spool, but you can run the smaller spools as well if you wanna run the smaller spools, but I like running an 11 pound. Um, so you can run full size 11 pound spools in here. Uh, as far as your adjustments here, very easy spring loaded tensioner here. You can just flip this down, flip that up, make your wire changes, whatever you need to do. Uh, and then you can push that back down, flip it up, and then you can make your adjustments on how much tension you want as far as on your uh, uh, pressure on the rollers. Um, so easy to do that. This is your basically your remote wire for the MIG uh, plugs in there so you can easily remove that as well. And as I mentioned on the spool, you just basically twist that off and that's the adapter for the 11 pound and then you can have one for the, uh, for the smaller spools as well. This is also an area right here um, where you can put the, you know, the 110 or 220 plug, uh, whichever plug you're not using can go right there uh, in, the, in the housing. So nice place to keep all that and also inside this door here inside the door you basically have your tables here for your mig welding with flux core your mig welding uh, with aluminum wire your tig welding parameters even stick welding parameters um, so it just kind of gives you the chart that you really don't need with this welder but i will say if you study this a little bit it gives you an idea of kind of your uh, your amp settings things like that it's not a bad thing to know for sure if you're a welder by trade you probably know a lot of this inherently um, but again, most of your DIYers, amateur, you know, small fabricators, things like that, it's not a bad go-to chart, uh, as well as even kind of got some, some how-to on uh, using auto set um, and kind of walking through the screen. Again, something you really don't need uh, because the screen just literally walks you through it um, very easily, but it is right there. You're not having to go to an instruction manual. It's right there on the inside of... Uh, uh, of that opening of the hood. Here on the back of the machine, you have your power button here uh, for the Miller 220. You also have a 35 amp reset button here. So if you do happen to trip that, uh, you can reset it right there. Uh, and one thing I really like about the Miller Multimatics, um, not seen on a lot of the other multi-process machines, is that inherently they have uh, two gas ports back here. So you have, and it says TIG and MIG on it. So I can run for my TIG, my 100% Argon, uh, and then my 2575 uh, mix for my MIG. And then the, the machine can actually do the switching. I don't have to worry about, you know, removing one of those lines and plug it into another. Some of the uh, other entry level or novice machines, if you will, um, only have one gas port and you have to switch those out. So it's nice that the Miller includes uh, two ports there for, for gas input. So earlier in the video, I think I mentioned that we had the, the Multimatic 211 or 212 or something. We had the 215. We had the Multimatic 215 and we were extremely happy with that, but it did have its limitations. One of those was 
uh, not being able to take aluminum. Um, that again, the 220 gives us the ability to do that. Uh, we really like where this inverter technology is headed. It's really expanding the capability of, of not only that beginner, but even that intermediate novice, um, and really expanding that capability of, of what a, uh, somebody in their shop, in their small shop, somebody out of the garage can do. I really don't think it's doing anything for the pro, and I shouldn't say doing anything. I don't think a pro needs to be concerned. A professional welder is gonna be a professional welder. You're inherently gonna be able to know things uh, about how metal works, going uphill, going downhill, going upside down, uh, whether it's aluminum, whether it's stainless steel. In your profession, you're gonna know things that even with the best machines, it's not gonna do a lot to, uh, to close that gap, if you will. So I, I don't think that professional fabricator has anything to worry about that this machine's gonna do miraculous things to make somebody a pro. However, what I do think it's done is made that ramp up from a total first person to ever pull the trigger on a MIG gun uh, to being able to step into aluminum, stainless steel, things like that, really giving them some of that uh, knowledge in the machine itself. You know, being able to walk you through and get you stepped up quicker. So I do think it's done a ton to help that beginner become that, that middle person. By all means, it's helped me a ton. I mean, I've, I, I will never claim to be a welder, um, but it's helped me to be a better fabricator. Even when I'm only taking aluminum every now and then, I still do a lot better job than, than when the first time I tried it. And again, it, it's because of the machines that we're using now. Um, so that's a big thing. So again, for that pro guy, uh, it's probably not the machine that's gonna be using it unless, again, it's not doing it a lot, but uh, you know, where they're needing something that's a multi-process machine, it's great for that. Where I see this is that middle of the line or even that beginner that does want to step straight into to taking aluminum. This is a great machine for this. That ability to go up and being able to do, you know, quarter inch and three eighths inch thick steel, great machine to do it. And again, it gives you that capability to step down if you need to. Um, so just off of, you know, single phase power, 240 volts, that is a recommendation I would give. Again, I mentioned it earlier in the video. Whenever you can, weld off that 240 volts. Uh, step up from that you know, typical 110, 120 outlet. Uh, it's gonna give you more range in the machine. Your machine's gonna run better anyway. Uh, you're gonna get a better output just because your parameters are just, just trust me on that. Whenever you can, step up the 240 volt. If you can't, by all means, you know, learn. And, and the biggest advice I could give you was something that was given to me a long time ago, watch the puddle. If you don't know what that means, do a little study and it should be self-explanatory, but the puddle will tell you about everything. It doesn't matter whether you're taking, running a stick, um, running MIG, running flux core, it doesn't matter. Learn to watch your puddle, learn to watch where that metal's melting, um, how hot it is, how cold it is, things like that, and that will help you a ton. We love the Multimatic 220, we really do. Uh, it's given us, again, a lot more uh, capability off of a single machine. Uh, we're able to put you know, other people on it to learn how to use it. Very intuitive. You're run, gonna run about $3,000 to step into the, this machine when you get all the consumables, when you get the TIG torch and the foot pedal and, and everything. It's gonna run you somewhere around two, three grand. Now, you might catch this on sale for 2,600 bucks or something like that, or $2,800 and save a, $100, $200, or you might be able to get it stripped down. I'm not sure about that. But again, looking at this, you're probably gonna be in that $3,000 range, but you're getting a lot of capability off of a single machine. Highly recommend it. Really love it so far. We love the 215, even more so on the 220. And if, if you're thinking that's just an amperage class, don't think that. I mean, there's so much, so many more features in the 220 versus the 215. Huge step up in machines. Really excited about it. Check it out for yourselves. Uh, also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button if you like this video. If you didn't like it, by all means, give us that thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.